I'm playing the entire career of Malik Neighbors and not stopping until the day he retires. He starts as a 77 overall rookie with hidden development and I have full confidence that he'll turn into an X Factor one day. Like having ratings like this as a rookie is pretty wild. Maybe he can join the 99 club one day considering he starts his career as a 21 year old. Now it may be tough though considering Daniel Jones is his quarterback. Hopefully for Malik's sake they'll move on from him after this ridiculous contract is up. And speaking of contracts, maybe at the end of Malik's rookie deal, he also moves on elsewhere. I mean, he should at least put up above average numbers for a rookie considering he starts his career as their number one receiver, which is nuts. Now, what we do from here is simulate to the end of the season because I want Malik to control his own destiny. Now, once he actually makes his Super Bowl, I'll jump in to play the entire game and try my absolute best to get him his first ring. And winning the Super Bowl is just one of the five career challenges Malik has to complete before he retires, along with winning Offensive Player of the Year. He has to lead the league in receiving yards at least once. He has to become an X Factor. He also has to break every Giants career receiving record. And if he fails just one of these five challenges, I have to buy and give away an authentic Malik Neighbors jersey to a random lucky subscriber in the comments. Let's get this bread, Malik. Well, I'm sure he wanted to have more success than this for his rookie season. Had one of the worst records in football. He had the worst offense in the entire league. That's just like not what you like to see. Daniel's fault. Get him out of here. That's an insane stat line. Couldn't run the ball worth the crap. And Malik Neighbors finished third on the team in receiving yards. Like, what are we doing? Like, how did this happen? Theo Johnson about outgained him. At least we had some guys get to the quarterback. But oh no, dude, Malik Neighbors. I mean, he's a superstar. Up to an 82 rated. Like, I just don't understand why he didn't perform better. And I really hope because he had a mediocre season, he doesn't lose that superstar. Safe to say, he did not lead the league in receiving yards this year. Maybe he's still one rookie of the year. Gosh dang it, dude. He came all the way down in eighth. He got beaten out by Thea. A pretty disappointing rookie season nonetheless. He's only 21 years old. I'm sure these numbers will get better and better. Let's see if his dev trait decreases this offseason. What a crazy Super Bowl. Hopefully something like this happens IRL. Moment of truth. He survived an offseason. Thank God. Still a superstar. Need this superstar to change the X Factor though ASAP so we can complete our first challenge and my blood pressure can go down. You know what? Let's up his morale. Let's set him as a team captain. That's it. He's going for 2,000 yards next year. Now, I hope to God this Giants front office makes some smart moves this offseason. In the top of their list, I hope to God is replacing Daniel Jones. I mean, they ended free agency with $15 million left over, so I have a feeling I'm not going to be happy here. Hold the freaking phone for a second. Did they just give money to Desmond Ritter? Oh, no, dude. Bring Daniel Jones back. Did they release some? Don't tell me his front office did what I think they did. Oh no, dude. They paid two quarterbacks. Dude, we have like a million dollar cap hit going towards quarterbacks. And garbage quarterbacks at that. They just need to go ahead and draft one here. Did the Giants draft their quarterback of the future? I mean, they did draft a quarterback, but like, I don't know if Jake Bush and his 72 overall are the answer. At least they got some good talent in the second and third rounds. Keep in mind, we need this team around Malik to be as good as possible because we need him to win a Super Bowl before his career is over with. In the next year, the rookie quarterback's gonna start, so I really hope somehow, some way, Malik Neighbors' sophomore campaign is better than his first. Hopefully this team can win more than five freaking games this year. They did worse! At least they didn't finish last in their division this time. That rookie quarterback suck? I mean, our offense was better than last year. We had a top 10 defense! Okay, so the rookie quarterback threw 24 interceptions. That, that might be why we're bad. We literally had seven Seven rushing touchdowns as a team all year. That's pathetic. At least Malik Neighbors had a breakout sophomore campaign. Nine touchdowns, 1,200 yards. Assuming that means his overall got quite the boost, he's up to an 86 now. Maybe at the end of the season, he'll finally become an X Factor. At this rate, though, dude, he really might want to look into, you know, not re-signing in New York and actually sign with a team that's serious about winning championships. Surely he didn't lead the league in receiving yards. St. Brown again. Some familiar names up top. We finished, was that, like 11th, 12th? Not bad, though. We're finishing just behind Jamar Chase. At least our rookie quarterback didn't throw the most amount of interceptions in the league. As a Titans fan, dude, this makes me want to puke. And not a single offensive player of the year vote. What are the odds this is Malik one day? Not very high if this freaking quarterback can't get much better than this. I mean, he is up to an 80. He only has normal development. Jake Bush, can we please never have last year happen again? I'm 
Unfortunately, though, no X Factor for Malik. And the defense, though, has two X Factors and a Superstore. Front office has $43 million to spend. Please, dear God, spend it wisely. So the front office only left $4 million left over, so that's more promise than the last offseason, so maybe they actually signed some quality. Please tell me you take your football seriously now. Okay, we signed two players to some pretty decently big contracts. And Jermaine Johnson got 63 mil. Hopefully, we can add some more quality here in the draft. Probably could use a wide receiver to complement Malik Neighbors, because the depth they have is trash. Please don't be a bunch of draft busts. Okay, I mean, it's not too shabby. I mean, you might have hoped for better than a 75 rated player with the fifth overall pick, but we take that. Oh, I wish the team would have waited until this year to draft a quarterback. I got faith that this squad can be better this year. I mean, we know the defense is going to be fine. I feel like third time's a charm. This is going to be a massive, massive Malik Neighbors breakout season, and this team is actually going to make the playoffs. Well, the dream's been crushed. I mean, I guess at least it's better than last year. I mean, we had just a middle of the pack offense. And what happened to our defense? This young quarterback, dude, just still throwing too many interceptions. At least he, like, is a gunslinger, throws some touchdowns, throws for some yards, but throws for a lot of picks. I mean, to be honest, that's probably the best season we've seen from Devin Singletary yet. Most importantly, receiving yards. And Malik Neighbors with a massive season. Like, where did this come from? Dude, this could have been good enough numbers to lead the league. That's crazy, dude. Where did this come from? He's up to a 90 rated already. He's only 23. Dude, these numbers could have also won him Offensive Player of the Year. Like, we could kill two birds with one stone this season. We had three guys with over 11 and a half sacks. Like, how did our defense suck? Surely Malik Neighbors led the league in receiving yards. No, my life is ruined. Oh my gosh, dude. Tyreek Hill literally had 31 more yards than him. I'm assuming that also means he didn't win Offensive Player of the Year. Went to Jalen Hurts anyway. He came in the top five, though, so he's making some progress. Keep in mind, he has plenty of time to get better. I mean, if Josh can get it done, so can this guy. And hold on a freaking second. It's not all doom and gloom around here as Malik Neighbors, and now a superstar X Factor. We take that. Let's go. I mean, the team's an 85 overall across the board going into the offseason. Like, that's playoff caliber talent. Like, imagine if this front office can actually have a big offseason here. I mean, play their cards right. Maybe this team potentially could go from 6-11 and 11 to Super Bowl contenders. Hold the f freaking phone, dude. The front office kind of went crazy this offseason. Like, no real superstars. But this might be the most amount of free agents I've ever seen a front office sign on one offseason. Hopefully, can follow that up with another solid draft class. And now they go out and draft themselves a wide receiver. I wonder if it could be the fact that Malik only has one more year left on his contract. Imagine, though, he actually leaves the Giants after his rookie contract's up. Dude, this team's for sure good enough to make the playoffs. At least the offense. Even this defense is pretty good. I mean, the team's up to an 87 overall across the board. Now, what are the odds this season Malik can somehow top his numbers from a year ago? Surely they make the playoffs this season. I don't understand why the team sucks so bad. Last place again. Dude, maybe Malik does need to leave. I mean, the offense was about the same. Defense was terrible, which doesn't make any sense. It's not terrible numbers from Jacob. A new signing at running back couldn't run the ball worth a crap, though. Most importantly, though, what about Malik? I mean, that's a pretty incredible season. 18 receiving touchdowns, which is a career high. A little low on the yards from last year, but still another nasty season. Let's see, though. Is that enough to lead the league in receiving yards? No, dude. Like, where did this come from? Brother, we had multiple receivers with 26, 26, 24 receiving touchdowns. Like, what in the world? Let's not compare yourself to others, Malik. You had a great season. You're up to a 93 rated. And he's still 20. Four. Surprised not one of those receivers got an MVP vote. This time around, Malik came in fifth place. Brandon Ayuk won it. I guess because of his 26 touchdowns. I really don't know what it's going to take for this team to win. Hold on a freaking second, dude. Why in God's green earth did this backup tight end become an X Factor? I don't understand. I'm still at a complete loss for words. How an 88 rated team only won four games. I mean, the freaking Commanders won one before us. Front off is better hope they have another 
another massive offseason. Their jobs are on the line. Okay, so definitely not the quantity of last year, but by far exceeds the quality. It's actually, three really good signings. We'll for sure take another good draft class. I mean, that's not terrible. Like, I've seen much worse. It's kind of a garbage draft class anyway. I mean, surely this team is playoff caliber. They're a freaking 88 overall with an 89 offense. I mean, even that quarterback they drafted earlier is up to an 87, even though he's just normal development. I'm telling you, dude, this is going to be one of the years Malik Neighbors solidifies himself as a top three receiver in the league. He's up to the seventh ranked wide receiver, and by the end of the year, watch, he's going to be top five. Surely there's no way they missed the playoffs again, right? This is crazy. And the funny thing is we barely missed out on the playoffs. That is disgusting. We at least almost had a top 10 offense this year. Jake had a career high thinking yards and passing touchdowns. Hopefully a lot of those went to Malik. Still suck at running the football. Malik neighbors. Oh my gosh. Got out gained. Anton Foster's taking over with his 19 touchdowns. Oh no, dude. This is not good for Malik's development. Although he is up to a 95. He's still ranked the number 7 receiver. Seriously though, dude. Where did this guy come from? Now what's gonna say this step back of a season might be enough to convince Malik to sign elsewhere, but he did go ahead and sign a four-year extension worth about $26 million per season. So he'll be a giant at least until he's about 30, and hopefully by then, he'll break all the Giants' career receiving records. I mean, he's already their all-time career receiving touchdown leader, and he's only 25! At this rate, dude, this will never be Malik Neighbors. And talk about the receiver catching up, dude. He's already up to an 86, and he's only 23. I mean, Malik's still a ways away from him. He's a 95 rated. He still has like three or four years left worth of progression. Maybe he can become a member of that 99 club. And with all the money our front office spent the last two off seasons, I highly doubt they do anything here. Okay, so they re-signed our quarterback to a mammoth deal, and they also re-signed Jermaine Johnson while restructuring both Dexter Lawrence and Malik Neighbors' contracts. They had to release a ton of players too. They didn't have any money left over to actually sign anybody. It makes it even more important that this is a banger draft class. And they drafted a quarterback? Why? You just gave somebody $200 million. This dumb front office doesn't deserve you, Malik. Like, this team, man, should still be making the playoffs 100% of the time, considering they're an 88 rated. I don't understand why this defense has sucked the last few years, dude. It's a decent unit. It's bound to happen one day, and I hope to God that one day is this season. It's about freaking time they made the playoffs. Not not only did they just make the playoffs, they went 12 and freaking 5. Not a 1C, but dude, beggars can't be choosers. Start of the season off kind of iffy, but hit our stride middle of the season. Went on a massive winning streak and unfortunately lost two out of our last three, so it looks like we might have went cold at the wrong time. We had the number one offense in the entire league. Like, what are you talking about? In a top five defense. Jake had an incredible season of 5,000 yards, 44 touchdowns, and for once in his life, didn't throw double digit picks. Hopefully a lot of these touchdowns and a lot of these yards went to Malik. Because we need him to have had a big year. Still can't run the freaking ball. Oh, please tell me we had a Malik Neighbors master class. Oh my god, what have I just witnessed? I got so confused. Used. Where the frick did this come from? I mean, to be fair, he did have 18 touchdowns two years ago, but he hadn't even come close to that yards total. Surely, dude, surely he led the league in receiving yards this year. Surely. Please don't let me down. Thank God. God! I mean, he led the league by 300 yards exactly. It wouldn't have been this close if he put these numbers up last year. And I believe he also led the league in receiving touchdowns as well. But it's about time we bring the positivity back. And dude, maybe these numbers as well? Good enough for an Offensive Player of the Year award. Let's check to see how the quarterbacks did, though. Like, nobody did anything crazy like 50-plus touchdowns. So maybe, just maybe, Malik Neighbors is this season's Offensive Player of the Year winner. Wait, when did this happen? Back on track. Let's get this bread. Let's go! Malik Neighbors is your Offensive Player of the Year. What a freaking season. I really want to know though, dude. How is he not up to a 99? Now, hold on a second. Talking about having an incredible season. What is he at career-wise? 7,800 yards, 76 touchdowns? So he still has quite a ways to go for the record book. Poor Jake couldn't even get a top 5 MVP vote. And I couldn't even win Coach of the Year. It's fine, because we're going to show him up in the playoffs. No way we get first 
surrounded by an 8-9 Chicago Bears team at home. We got the dub and we get a second straight 8-9 team at home. What are the odds? If we lose one game shy of the conference championship to an 8-9 team, I'm going to be so sad. And I am so sad. Are you kidding me? Do we lost by 14? What do you mean? Like, what did we do wrong? They had two 100-yard rushers. Like, what are we doing? Oh, dude, this one stings. At least Malik had a productive season. What a boring Super Bowl matchup. And what a boring Super Bowl winner. At least finally, our quarterback is no longer normal development. About time as a 90 overall. Malik dude's getting super, super close. Becoming a true member of that 99 club. He's only 27, so he still has a few more years to progress. And at this rate, dude, I wonder if he can break the all-time career receiving touchdown record. If this front office can put together one more solid offseason, maybe this team is finally ready to go all the way. They didn't sign a soul. They better make up for that with the best draft class we've ever seen. Oh my God, dude, like, what are we doing? Three wide receivers drafted, by the way, all underneath 68 rated. Oh my God, look at this receiver that win number one. Brother, this might be the best player I've ever seen drafted in the history of franchise mode. I just gotta cheat and see. He's gotta be an X Factor. He is right off the get code. That's crazy. And look at what we had to settle for. Unfortunately, the teams overall did drop down to an 85, mainly because we got some massive holes on defense. Defense. I still believe Malik Neighbors can lead us to the promised land. I mean, it is a new decade. I guess we're at the point where really anything could happen. 9-8 and eight and just missed the playoffs again. What's going on in Philadelphia, by the way? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Not like we had a bad offense. It's that freaking defense again. Seems like at this point, Jake Bush is putting up the same numbers every year. We'll gladly take it. But what do you know? Teams still can't run the ball. How about Malik it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. That might be the first time I have ever seen a receiver go for more than 2,000 yards in a season. Not mine, you know, the 25 receiving touchdowns. And people are going to think I cheated. Nah, 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 brother. We got to go to schedule for confirmation. You can see I didn't play a literal game all season long. Malik Neighbors just went the frick off. We literally might be in the midst of the greatest wide receiver career of all freaking time. And as you can see, that season officially made him a member of the 99 club. Led the league in yards, although Maron St. Brown almost had 2,000 himself. And I think by quite a bit, led the league in receiving touchdowns too. So he got the triple crown. Like, I'm wondering if that got him some MVP votes. Like, it should have. He didn't get a single MVP vote. Like, what are we talking about? If he wouldn't have won Offensive Player of the Year, I was going to fight somebody. Like, what's a receiver have to do to win MVP? Hold on a second, though. Is that good enough to break all the Giants receiving records? Yes, it is, dude. That is not nuts. Oh, wait. Just kidding. False alarm. Still hasn't beat Tumor on receptions. Wait, is he literally tied with them? Wait, that is crazy. And I'm just now realizing too, that season literally broke every single giant single season receiving record. All in one year. That's just incredible. Hey, look at that young rookie quarterback breaking all the passing records too. I'm just gonna go ahead and simulate straight to next season. See how the team looks. And then inevitably have Malik Neighbors break another record. I've made it to 2031. This offense looks like they can compete again. Even Theo Johnson's now an X-Factor. Teams overall is an 87 with a 91 offense. It looks like the defense is lacking just a little bit. Oh no. We're gonna have to have another Malik Neighbors nuke season to have a chance. Gotta make the playoffs while Malik Neighbors is still in his prime. We'll gladly take a 10 and 7 season if that means playoffs. Even if we didn't win the division. Where our offense kind of went backwards a little bit. Our defense was dead last. Another Jake Bush masterclass. Another masterclass and how not to run the football. I mean, it's not terrible. Have you seen worse? How about Malik? Another pretty spectacular season. 1,677 yards, 18 touchdowns. I'm sure he still didn't get an MVP vote, though. Didn't lead the league this time, though. I'm, like, so confused on the success of Josh Downs. Like, he just is crazy. He's up to a 96 rating. What's going on? But, fellas, I think it's safe to say that Malik Neighbors has officially shattered every single New York Giant career receiving record 
which gets us so close. We just need that dang Super Bowl. I just thought I'd point out to his quarterbacks up to a 92. So him and Malik's obviously made a pretty good dynamic duo. No MVP votes for Malik. St. Brown stole the Offensive Player of the Year award from him. Let's harness the energy from that shafting and go on a Super Bowl run here. Gotta beat the Packers and Lambeau though. And we didn't get first rounded. I am shocked. One by eight. Like we'll take it. No mistakes from Jacob. Malik Neighbors doing what Malik Neighbors does best. And I have to beat the 13 and 4 Seahawks. If we win, we have to play the winner of Cowboys Bears in the NFC Championship. I just really don't think we have it in us though to go beat Green Bay at Lambeau, then go beat the Seahawks in Seattle. You know what they say though, dude? Let's get this bread, brother. And we get a 21 point victory. Now Malik has to go and travel to beat the Bears. And of course, that's almost 99 rated Caleb Williams we have to go and beat. A Jake Bush masterclass. For the second straight playoff game, Malik Neighbors puts up two touchdowns and 100 plus yards. Even the disciple of Marshawn Lynch wasn't enough to take down Malik Neighbors. Now, can this team really do it? Can they go three straight away games to make it to the first Super Bowl since what, 2008? We got to get Malik Neighbors in a Super Bowl. We made it. We won by seven, but now we have to go and beat the team that beat Patrick Mahomes by 16. But we just can't go on this generational run and then lose to the Bills. At least as an update, our quarterback did finally become a superstar. He's been a superstar in my book for a while now. Okay, we've had a few players on defense also become superstar. Let's go. Surely I won't screw this up, right? And also on top of just winning the Super Bowl, Leaks also got his own individual challenge for this game. He has to go for a minimum of 200 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns. Or I have to give away a copy of Madden 25 to a subscriber. Hopefully our defense can get us back kind of fast here. That's just not what we like to see. Wait, hold on a second. What does that say? When the frick did this happen? 99 rated Joe Burrow is their quarterback. Had a good running back. Keon Coleman's one of the best receivers in the league. Old KK's one of the best tight ends. Our terrible defense is in for a long one today. It's already 7 0. It's all right, boys. Don't fret. We got Malik Neighbors on our side. So I gotta make sure I'm not done with the football and just like force feed them and, and throw interceptions like I almost did just there. Be smart with the football. Just throw the ball away. Live to see another play. Should be open. Malik Malik Neighbors, first down. Oh, that's what you don't like to see. I think he's got him beat. Malik Neighbors deep. Malik Neighbors deep. That's a catch, and that's a touchdown. Oh, my gosh, dude. That was too freaking easy. Dude, that was a freaking dime. See if our defense can actually get a stop. Oh, no. A sack followed by a 69-yard rushing touchdown. Nice. I locked the freak in, boys. We're in a barn burner. Oh, I'm making dumb decisions. No, I'm not. What even just happened? Malik Neighbors with another grab. I legit feel like the cornerback glitched out right there, but I'm not asking questions. Malik Neighbors is such an alpha. He just knocked him out the way. Dude, I'm cooking up this Bills defense, and I'm just running coach suggestions. Dude, we're either completing passes to Malik Neighbors or getting sacked. He's open again. The slot fade. The slot fade is OP. Touchdown again! Dude, that's already two receiving touchdowns. Like, what the heck is going on? Not gonna lie, though. That was a freaking dime. Great catch, too. And oh, my God. Our defense actually got a stop. Wait, what just happened? They got a penalty on the point. Oh, they're going to score. I'm going to be so mad. They're going to score. I'm going to be so mad. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I'm angry. I'm so angry. We held them to a field goal, at least. So now we actually have a chance to go down the field and take the freaking lead for once. But I'm going to try to, like, remember what it feels like to have a running game. Just like that, dude. Holmes at the middle first down. Now I've got to take advantage of this glowing and X underneath Malik Neighbor's body. Not be stupid here. Come back route. It's beautiful, dude. That is perfection. Oh, no. Hey, it worked. We finally completed a pass to somebody that's not Malik Neighbors. Theo Johnson down the seam. He's going to make the grab again. Consecutive passes to somebody that's not Malik Neighbors. Let's get Malik Neighbors in here for a third time, though. Slant wide open. Beautiful pass protection from the offensive line. Malik Neighbors scores his third receiving touchdown of the freaking half. Our defense for once actually forced a three and out. Let's not get a penalty on the punt. Thank the Lord. Have a chance to go on top by two possessions. We at least need a field goal, though, to go on top by seven. Try a cheeky little screen pass here. I don't want to be dumb because I know if I force the ball to Malik Neighbors here, I'm just going to choke the game away. I think I'm going to force it to him. 
Oh no, it's a pick, it's a pick, it's a pick, it's a pick. He almost caught the ball still. Make sure we get the first down here. First down and plenty. They're in field goal range just like that. I'm gonna call a timeout. Dump it off to the running back. Get some yards. I'm gonna have to run hurry up and it's gonna chew so much clock off. Oh no, 12 seconds. I might honestly have to settle for a field goal. One on one. Don't let it get picked off. It's fine. Three seconds left. 47 yard field goal. I think it's gonna be short. Wait a freaking minute, dude. Do I have the worst kicker of all time? I have a punter kicking the ball, apparently. Apparently. He has 90 kick power, so like, what gives, Jerry? It's okay, though, because we get the ball here to start the second half. I think I'm going to change up my game plan just a little bit, try to control the clock a little bit more. I don't want Joe Burrow and the Bills to have the ball way too much. I don't want this to turn into some, like, crazy 50-point shootout. Unfortunately, though, it is a third down and nine. Neighbors in the slot. I might actually look deep here. There's somebody that's not Malik Neighbors. We need a good throw. Oh, I thought he had a chance. Unfortunately, fellas, got to punt the freaking football. That's exactly what I did not want to be doing our defense coming up clutch once again forcing once again another punt let's make sure we actually get a first down this time around we can't run the freaking ball I'm scared to throw it like i just know i'm gonna force it to malik and throw a pick six or something Malik neighbors oh the middle is behind him as five yards he's literally one yard away from completing the challenge Theo johnson quick little pass that's a first down we have plenty of time to get malik neighbors another catch i just want to make sure we use this clock slow things down and most importantly win this freaking game i i did not know i was throwing the ball there so i'm gonna take the check down i was totally expecting a run hey a successful run for once it's actually fun I'm playing smart football. Oh no, I thought I was being smart. That's the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. I'm depressed. You're getting bitched, like, like seriously. Yep, 73 overall, Storm Hackett's the man for the job. Oh no, dude, just like that, the Buffalo Bills are gonna regain the lead. That is unbelievable. Yes, it's just time for big time players to make big time plays in big time games. Oh no. No, 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 that lineman is the smartest player I've ever seen. With this, every Giants fan forgives Evan Neal for every sin he's ever committed. Let's make sure we just get this freaking first down. Bleak neighbors on the skinny post. Good throw, good catch. That puts him at 220 yards on the day. So with this, challenge completed. Now all that matters is just getting the freaking dub here. We kind of cross her and get some more yards. I don't know if like hurry up's the move. I'm just kind of nervous. Gonna keep the ball on the ground. Storm Hackett with a huge hole. And he's not gonna fumble. Kind of don't want to leave too much clock for the Bills. But at the same time, I want to make sure I score here. Here, just gonna take off. Just slide, slide, slide. Don't you dare fumble. The one thing I do not want to do is have to settle for a field goal absolutely freaking not oh no malik oh that was almost so bad neighbors back of the end zone please 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 yes yes brother what a freaking dot that is malik neighbors fourth receiving touchdown of the day and i cannot get over how good of all freaking throw this was what the heck dude look at the toe drag oh no the zebras better not ruin my day no parlays today daryl touchdown stands i'm gonna lie that had me sweating a little bit we just need one stop from our defense and they get 28 yards on the first play wait wait we get a pick we get a pick let's go chew this freaking clock and come out of this game super bowl champions you really only need like one maybe two first downs call me crazy i'm throwing the ball here and that's why I shouldn't have. That's the dumbest thing I could have ever done in my entire life. But we're good. No worries. We're going to pick this up with our legs. Oh my gosh, that's massive. That's what she said, but that's massive. It really is. So last play before the two-minute warning. One more first down, and we should have this bad boy clinched. Hack it, please. Beautiful vision. Beautiful vision. I think that's enough. First down. I'm just a troll. I'm trying to get neighbors. One more touchdown. He's wide open. Poetry. Oh, dude, that's his touchdown number five. And the New York Giants are officially Super Bowl champions with a 34-24 victory over Joe Burrow and the Buffalo Bills. It's about freaking time. And who else in the league neighbors win an MVP? But this Lombardi means neighbors is a Super Bowl champion, which does mean challenge officially complete. But he's still only 29 years old dude so he's got plenty of career left to go although he did for the first time regress 
down to a 97 overall, which it makes zero sense to me that he lost all of these ratings, considering the fact he's coming off a 12 catch, 272 yard, five touchdown game. Idiotic game. But he's still good enough to be considered the number one receiver in the National Football League. Rightfully so. Which apparently he's already re-signed another four year contract extension worth about $38 million per season. What I'm gonna do from here is simulate to the end of his contract, see how he's looking at that point and see if maybe for the first time he signs with a different team. So we made it to 2034, not a good sign the Giants aren't in the playoffs. Well, offense is kind of stinky at this point. Jake Bush is still loving life. Like, just curious, what's his overall at? He's at a 92 X factor. Now, what about Malik? He's still putting up some pretty crazy numbers at this point. 20 touchdowns is nuts, dude. Still a 96 overall superstar, so he really hasn't regressed that much, even though he's 31. Well, he did have a few down years, so I'm surprised this year of all years he actually had a good one. So we already signed an extension for another two years. So maybe, just maybe, dude, Malik Neighbors does play his entire career as a giant. I'm just curious, dude. At this point, Malik's up to 15,000 career receiving yards, has over 1,000 career receptions, and has a total of 159 career receiving touchdowns. I was here to say I don't think Neighbors can pass any of Jerry Rice's career records, but uh, apparently Josh Downs has proven us wrong already. Now, since he missed the playoffs, let's go ahead and see here what he's looking like at the end of his contract extension. Oh, I wonder if he played himself into a new contract considering his team just got a first round bye. So even though Malik's like, what, 34 years old at this point, apparently the offense is still cooking with the number one unit in the league. Best season I've ever seen from Jake Bush. Please tell me Malik's still cooking. Yes, he is. I mean, not the numbers we're accustomed to, and that's crazy, you know, when you're kind of complaining and he got 1,300 yards and 16 touchdowns. But that's still solid. Now, I'm mainly curious what his overall is at right now. Now. He's an X Factor again. How? He's still a 92 overall. I legit, dude, thought he'd be down to like normal development at this point. I mean, even last year was pretty crazy. They already signed him to another three year extension. This guy's gonna be a billionaire. He's up to over 1,250 career receptions. He's closing in on 20,000 career receiving yards, and he's closing in on 200 career receiving touchdowns. Now, let's see if they can actually make it back to a Super Bowl. That's insane, dude. They actually did. That's crazy. Won both playoff games pretty handy. Come on now, let's give Malik his second ring. Moment of truth and second ring it is. I even got a little something something. Now I'm curious, did they win any prior Super Bowls? Oh my god, yes they did. So what am I talking about, dude? This is Super Bowl ring number three. How the freak did I miss that? Now we are at the point where I do need to make sure he's not retiring. I wouldn't expect so considering the contract he just signed. Like, what do you mean? What are we doing? You just left 90 plus million dollars on the table and he was still an 87 overall with store development like why'd we do this malik just such a missed opportunity but after picking up 1800 career receiving yards 187 career receiving touchdowns 1252 career receptions and a third super bowl guess he thought it was perfect time to ride off into the sunset but what else did he have left to prove as he finishes his nfl career as the greatest wide receiver of all time i'm pretty positive giants fans would take this. Now, hopefully you enjoyed that one, and if you did, you can click right here to go watch me play the entire career of Marvin Harrison Jr. Imagine he had a better career than Malik Neighbors did. Gosh, while you're here, before you click that, click that sub button, brother. Find it past Mr. Beast tonight. I need you to click that button. Come on.